Welcome back to the GCWC, ladies and gentlemen. And we have one match left for the day. And it is KSV versus BTG. And yeah, what are your thoughts on that game, Brett? It's going to be a struggle for BTG. You know, we're just going to lay it out there. It is going to be a struggle. BTG has been unable to win a game so far here at the GCWC. And now they're going up against our reigning world champions that have looked... Pretty much Dominance. dominant since day number one, minus a, you know mishaps against Fnatic. Yeah, and right now BTG, I mean, let's face it. So far, most of the time when we're looking at the beginning of the tournament, their biggest problem was definitely global and macro play overall. They got a little bit better, but just the last time that we saw them, they got eliminated on Sky Temple within seven minutes, and that looked rough. It so was also against an opponent from within their own region, which, yep. like from my perspective, only kind of you know, worsens that kind of loss in that situation. The comfortability of understanding your opponent was something that BTG had on their side that they will not hear against KSV. For me, I want to see BTG hopefully concentrate draft and playstyle uh, on an early game. Uh, at this point, I think it's unrealistic to build anything to a late game strategy. Just focus on going, bring aggression, bring the early game fight, and then whatever happens from that point on happens. Yeah, and right now, I mean, this is going to be pretty rough either way but as you said if they focus on the early game this is also something where they have the most chances of actually taking something away from this match and using it as a learning experience building a late game strategy against a team that will punish you early on when they smell weakness is very unrealistic so even if the late game doesn't work out for bdg if at least in the early game they present a solid front and uh, can gain some information and some experience from it i would already call it a win yeah, I think that's got to be the game plan for them. And, you know, for KSV's perspective, I mean, confidence has obviously got to be there. They have confidence against some far more, you know, formidable opponents in the world. So against here, against BTG, I wouldn't be surprised if we see, you know, play with the food a little bit. We know that MVP Black way back was comfortable, you know, Ross or role changing a little bit, bringing out the wild heroes. Yeah, or maybe role swap as well. Saka was talking actually about how he always jokes, uh, jokes with Reset that he feels Reset should actually start to support him a little bit so <laughs> that he can finally go back on the damage. And uh, that might be something that we could see here that Reset just says, you know what? Well, maybe it's not recent, maybe it's just Saga who goes over and says like, you know what, for this game, you are going to be the support player and you're going to support me. You can pay me back. And so, when we look at these map picks, the fact that Curse Hall is picked by KSV, it's not that wild, but I, against BTG, I expected them to stick to the standard BOE or uh, Sky Temple. Neither map was banned and they didn't pick either, so I already feel like this is hopefully a unique hero pick or maybe they're looking for more practice I, I i can't feel like that's the argument for a map choice i expected if ksv gets the map choice they go to battlefield and try to speed run it yeah that's what i'm saying battlefield and sky the yeah. standard korean we can just snowball this game out of control it's over so that seeing that ksv picks this i i feel like there's hopefully going to be that kind of wild pickup from them so bdg opening up with a ban on etc again I would really love for them to have, first of all, a little bit more awareness towards the global. So that's something that we're going to look forward here to hopefully see from them. And at the same time, them trying to uh, just have a very solid early game against their opponents. If we're going to see wild picks, we expect them on the side of KSV, simply because they are so dominant that they might change it up here slightly. BDG at the beginning opts for Greymane, who has been just uh, stable throughout the entire tournament. And of course, we have several other heroes like Rega, even the Haka, that could then be picked in later on. To be completely honest, I feel like a lot of the meta might kind of go out of the window with these drafts, and I really want to mind it for arguments, for very different arguments on both sides. I think that if BTG wants to kind of stick to the standard meta, don't get me wrong, I don't think that she'd overly neglect it, but maybe considering, again, focus on to the early game or individual strength on specific heroes to make sure that they can just have a presentable first 10 minutes of this match because if they fail to be able to hold their own for that long, this game is going to get out of control. You can clearly tell that KSV is currently thinking about first picking Gaslow. You think it would get that with two? No, 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 no. I think, I'm, I think, I'm memeing at this point. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's going to be that wild. But, I mean, if you see Rich when they're debating a first pick, and, I mean, we can see. Look, oh, look yeah, at Saki. Look, <laughs> look at Saki and look at Rich, how they're just, like, hitting around. Like, these guys are pretty serious usually, but in this case... They have been dominant, and if you see those faces, then you know they are, if they're not picking it, they're at least discussing some crazy stuff. Yeah. I'm excited to see whatever it's going to be. 
probably going to be that last pick, if anything, here. KSV not wanting to risk anything up until that point. Coming back to your point, though, I would really, really... You talked about meta, and you talked about how we could see some uh, picks also on the side of BGG heading more towards their own comfort zone. I would really like for them to play standard. Like, use, okay. it, use it as a learning opportunity. They said from the get-go, we know we are the weakest team. We are the underdogs here. We are the ones that need to grow. We're the one that needs to practice. We've mentioned the work ethic. They're always in the practice area. They're always looking for scrims. They're saying, hey, we have a chance to scrim against the best teams in the world here. Let's use that so that when we're heading into our own region, into our uh, own league, we have a leg up. Right now, they have an opportunity to do that against KSV on stage, which is added experience, so I would prefer them to head into meta picks. I completely agree for the growth for BTG. I, the only reason I kind of feel otherwise in this case is purely because I feel like the skill disparity is so severe that sticking to the meta will not let you hold out your own for long enough for you to gain enough information to be like, we got better off this. So almost we're just, you just, yeah. again, focus on the early game and be like, we had three minutes of success against KSV. What did we do very right? What did we do very wrong? Because if KSV does what KSV does best, I just feel like this is going to be, oh, there's a solo pick here, oh, a solo kill there, and suddenly they're a full level ahead. That should be kind of where it's headed. And talking about drafts, what do you make out of that bright wing band that we currently see here? I did not think that we would... I, I, I can't see a major argument for it, other yeah. than obviously picking the Genji and the Greyman together. It's a lot of dive focus for them and their composition, but it's not been standard enough, nor... Do I look at this and expect that on the side of KSV? But oh. I do feel like it's reactionary to what they have so far. Yeah, but KSV already is running Arthurs. They have Rhaegar, and I don't think that they believe Genji and Greyman on the other side are enough of a threat to commit to a double support with Rhaegar. Brightwing, which we haven't really seen as much in the tournament. To be honest, I, we haven't seen as much Brightwing as I expected, especially with a lot of the teams at BlizzCon showcasing Brightwing over. bomb strategies with oh, Genji jumping in and Brightwing looking for the Emerald Wind. I expect that to not being the dominant go-to, but at least being something that we see a little bit more often. And so far, Brightwing has seen very little play compared to what we expected. Yeah, I think maybe a reason for that is just because it is so dependent on making sure you get that kind of isolation. And right now, I, I, it does feel like fights are pretty easy to rely on making them yeah. last a little bit longer and not as just one shot, one kill. Also, I feel the bright isolation when we talk from a coordination aspect is it is can be pretty rough. Yeah. Like you, the comps that are being played right now don't hinge as much on that one that one win condition within the team fight where if you don't hit it, you're all of a sudden in trouble and find yourself retreating and hoping for your cooldowns to come back online so that you can give it a second try. So the meta and also the strategies have been a little bit more stable. But even more reason why that bright wing ban surprises me a bit. And KSV picks not only Rhaegar, they pick the second best support as well and straight up go into Lucio, which leaves BTG with a solo support on Kerosene. There's so much counter-engage from the composition that KSV has right now that if the Greyman Genji go in and are not effective within the first few seconds, and on, honestly, with the Cassio pickup, I'd feel like that's going to be really difficult for them to find success in those initiations, immediately getting the blind response, not even considering what the other heroes provide to that circumstance. That at this point, I, I feel like KSV, this last pick can really kind of be anything, and it, I still like their composition as long as it does some damage, right? It brings a little bit of fight. And I want to know what KSV picks on the last piece. So far, it has been a pretty normal draft for them. This is really solid. You have the double support, Lucio and Rhaegar. You have the Ancestral and Rhaegar, the immediate burst steal, whereas Lucio provides not only speed for quick rotations, but also the overtime. Hey, it's going to be Samuro. And we have Samuro in the game. All right. Didn't think that that would be the wild pickup from them, but I'm glad to see that at least with the priority into Curse Hollow, because again, it did feel a little bit not that wild, but a little yeah. bit out of place for MVP. I'm, I'm glad that they got some kind of flex that's out of the meta, if you will. Yeah, they didn't go too crazy with it just yet. Testing the waters with Samuro. Are we expecting, like, uh, we can expect standard Samuro play, I feel like, in this situation, right? You aren't expecting anything different? Not really, to be honest. I would expect them to just like try and make sure that they dominate the camps here. And no, nothing too crazy. Like, like I really think this is, as you put it earlier, this is a little bit testing the waters because I know that especially Rich was throwing some crazy ideas around when they were discussing drafts. He was shut down pretty quickly, and they were saying like, nope, we 
check out what's happening here first. So I feel the Samura is just dipping their toe in the water a little bit and then seeing how they can fare against BTG on map one. If that is going to be a dominant performance, I could see wild stuff happening on map number two, if at all. But I feel Samuro is still a hero that can have a pretty big impact, and especially in the hands of a high skill player, he can be pretty frightening. It's going to be scary here. I, it's going to aid a little bit with the global pressure that they might be dealing with, if they, as long as we see the standard illusion mastery. That again, I'm expecting this is going to be standard Samuro play, yeah. not the. But I, I, I can see them getting a little bit crazy and going with that blade storm, maybe bringing the team fight. There are a lot of melees on the side of BTT yeah. that it could gain a lot of value with. But I would also say that it's just so much more fun to just show off with. Uh, You're right. Yeah, it's like it's just. Just for the showing off potential, I would expect them not going into Bladestorm. So the cool factor alone makes Bladestorm an irrelevant heroic, is what you're saying. Yeah. All right. I, I think I can agree with that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's pretty dope to actually see it being used, you know? Like, it, it looks cool, especially if you're coming from a Warcraft 3 perspective. But at the same time, Illusion Master, it can be pretty flashy. And I think that's what they're going for right now, flashy. I, I hope to see some flash there, because we're getting ready for game number one between BTG, the eighth seed here at GCWC so far. I'm winning, looking at the standings versus reigning world champ MV, or excuse me, KSV Black, formerly MVP Black, just coming off that BlizzCon win. And I can personally help myself, but still uh, just hope for uh, us to head into the game and just seeing Saka saying like, no boys today, no support for me. I would have loved him to be on his, you know, old, going old school. Yeah. With Saka on Tracer. Yeah. Something like that. That would have been pretty awesome. But guys, we are heading into game number one. We're to the left side. We have the Chinese team on the first map against KSV Black. It's Cursed a Hollow. And currently we're seeing ST on Greymane, A on Genji. We have 619 on Murden. CJZ on the Haka and MJ, last but not least, playing Karazim in game number one. In the red, it's KSV, Tist on Arthas, Reset playing Cassia, Rich on Samuro, Kyocha playing the Rhaegar, and Lucio played by Sake. That is no way we're seeing Blackstone. I love whenever they bring out the BM on <laughs> ML. Absolutely love it. It's my favorite thing at international tournaments when everybody just goes, remember when? Because very few do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to make anti-North America jokes, you know? It, it, it okay, here's the thing. What do you mean with very few do? It's the exact, it's, it's the one thing that pops up every single time someone mentions how long it has been uh, when uh, before North, but, uh, when North America last time won anything. In I, the I, I guess I interpret it a little bit more of like, kind of like that room. Be like, remember when North America won? Because like, it doesn't feel like the competition is quite there anymore. More than like a... Hey, you know, actually remember that? I mean, have you been on Reddit? The go-to response is ah. always, okay, so how many BlizzCons have you won? <laughs> the answer is zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It is it's zero. It's not like I have room to talk. I got eighth place in the tournament that they in that BlizzCon when they ended up getting first, so it's not like I can really talk that much trash. Laning situation throughout, KS, or throughout this game, number one, hasn't been that crazy. Uh, sticking to the Rhaegar solo through mid, BTG. I will say, uh, with judging by how offensive of an early game that they have, they do not necessarily have the laning situation they would ideally want. Uh, Genji holding his own against the Rhaegar in the mid lane is definitely not optimal. Uh, yeah. You always want to be dancing around the map looking for ganks. I mean, at the same time, when it comes to talent choices, oh, we have a bit of a fight happening down here, and KSV putting on the pressure. But talent choice here already with Eternal Hunger on the side of Arthas. Don't really see that too often. Nothing too crazy here, but he can stack up a bit of extra damage normally. We'll see either Rhyme or Frost Presence here. Frost Presence has been the go-to in the tournament in most cases. But on the other hand, we have Karazim, Genji, and of course also Greymane against them. So I could have definitely seen him go into Rhyme in this case. And for some Muro, pretty standard thus far, but it's the 10 that we're really watching out for. Both teams, as you see, waiting for their giant camps, like routine on Cursed Hollow. Spawn to the two minute mark because the first tribute variable is anywhere from 215 spawn to the, I believe it's 255, might be the maximum. Yeah. yeah. It's got a weird, you know, kind of slight difference. It's not the standard, like, 30 seconds like you'd expect. Giants picked up. Whoever, BTG has a small advantage because Samuro doesn't have the opportunity to be that kind of, you know, split problem in any way, shape, or form until he has his heroic. So having a global advantage for BTG over this first tribute 
is going to be where they need to make their mark in this game if they're going to hold their own. I mean, to be honest with you, KSV so far has been playing this pretty respectful. Yeah, they we, have. We have, again, the problem here is that VTG just in the tournament so far hasn't really made any big impressions. They have some glary weaknesses that we're trying to compensate for and also are trying to just get better at. But at the same time, a lot of teams were expecting KSV to be way more aggressive in the early game against BTG. I really feel that at this point they just want to make sure that they are not all of a sudden becoming the meme of the tournament. Tribute's going to spawn on top with the Giants uncleared by BTG. KSV just wants to be able to stall this out as long as possible. First interrupt is going to be Tiss there. Nice flank from Sake. Going to throw out a couple of autos there at Lucio. Reflection level 4 for Samuro, by the way. Fight heading on. Reset actually in a lot of trouble here, and he might be the first one to die, but no, it's Genji and Karazim as a quick follow up. A double kill for KSV as they are able to save Reset, and now it's going to be the Harker that falls next. A triple kill early on for KSV on the first fight. While well, the Siege Giants are still pushing the bot lane, so KSV is currently winning on all lanes. 619 goes in for another interrupt there, but I think that's going to be the last one he has left. He wants to move in, might cost him his life. I also want to point out quickly that we have a bit of a Cassia going down, Gramian taking her apart. Cassia is a hero that I just was about to mention, since we have a bit of a different build here currently for her, going into the more traditional charge strikes on level 1, and then with the inner light on level 4 here. Whereas most of the North American and European uh, styles that we've seen are heavily focused on level 1, particularly the Thunderstroke, so just trying to get your Q in, and yeah, with the cooldown reduction on 13, disregarding one misclick by Quacknix and the game where he played it, but that has been the go-to build for most of the Cassia players that we've seen so far. In this situation though, maybe I, I can see a little bit of an argument judging by how many melees exist on the side of BTG. Uh, I, I guess the argument for melees could exist for both builds, right? Because then you have more Qs and it's more likely to hit mm -hmm. more targets. Uh, but then just the auto attacks at level 1 and the splash damage opportunities can be really difficult to deal with. Uh, it can, I mean, think about it. You have Genji, Karzin, Dahaka, Greymane, Merton. Every one of those is likely going to be affected as long as that is active. Skullkirk, by the way, on level 7 from Meridian. We have seen that in the tournament. Starts to pop up a little bit more right now. And at the same time, uh, Samuro away the blade, as we said, on level 1. It's just a tiny lead for KSV in experience overall, but they are definitely making the moves on the map now. And Rich currently with Samuro holding the mid lane, Cassia at the bot lane, facing off against the Haka. And this is an easy second tribute for KSV that BTG doesn't even contest. So already in a situation where KSV is threatening a curse on the next one. I'm surprised uh, to see, again, the passiveness, though, with the laning situation for KSP. I feel like maybe I am, maybe I'm not evaluating the compositional strengths well enough. They are dominating over the bottom lane because of this mismatch. A is going to come down and maybe poke off, but not able to get too much damage there with that initiation inward. Uh, but mainly because I thought that KSP, just the dominance they would be able to display throughout this game, that they haven't done it through so much through a macro sense. That being said, that there was only that one fight over this first tribute, and that was enough to scare BTG off of the secondary tribute. Uh, so didn't really bring the fight, and KSV yeah. is just kind of playing a bit more patient, hoping that they'd respond to those tributes here with this comp, at least in the way that they've played it so far. Bot lane already, a bit of a fight happening here. And by the way, Aeon Genji went into Dragon Claw as his level 4 talent. Absolutely love this build, honestly. It's one of my favorite like Genji builds flat out. Whenever you have a massive AoE group like this, being able to pair it with your level 7 and make sure you get that AoE damage out. SDE, it's uh, used it in specifically that Sky Temple boss control yep. fight, and it just bodies. I can definitely, uh, it's definitely going to be pretty cool if they can confirm the kill with it because they were pretty close a few times already and that was before the level 4 at the level, at the fight up to the top with the level 1 talent still. But at this point it's again a pretty aggressive move from KSV in the fight itself. Down goes Karazim after palming himself and we have the Korean team straight up on the hunt against the rest of the Chinese players here. Getting Greymane and trying, of course, to confirm that curse here against BTG, and that could snowball the game. It's a situation where I was wondering with the dominance of KSV over that fight, <laughs> Sake goes in, tracks it down, and finds himself the kill on the Genji. If they would start the boss, you know, when you yeah. normally see the tribute that close to you and you're at curse point, you just find a situation where you want to just maybe start the boss beforehand, but or you're gonna keep, or you, or you just sidewall keep, knowing that you got that last kill and just have zero respect here for what is going to be the middle <laughs> four. Yeah. So already aiming for the first keep of the game, seven and a half minutes in. In the meantime, the top lane 
is uh, making short work all of the fort itself. Keep is gonna fall here, and that might not be the only thing that falls. In comes Tehaka with a quick isolation, but we also have a Dragon Blade out. A is going to die here, though, since we have an immediate sound barrier by Lucio. Karazim down, That's Genji game. dead, and that is not only Muradin, but also Tehaka that has fallen. And that could be game. game. Yeah, Samuro's damage onto the core is really, really high compared to most heroes. It's probably one of the highest in the entire game. And now with the wipe that close to the core, it feels like KSV maybe chose Curse Hollow for a different reason than we expected. Just Curse Sidewall, wipe on the keep, and end the game as soon as possible. Eight minutes and 11 seconds in. They do end up getting the kill onto Rhaegar, but it seems too little too late. KSV, yeah. get a point. 8 minutes, 17 seconds. As it happens, only the second shortest game. What's the shortest game, Calder? 7 minutes... 23 seconds 23? on Sky Temple versus CE. Yep. That was a rough one. I'll be honest. That was, rough. That was rough to watch and rough to cast. Game number one! <sighs> That's the best way to put it. You know, exactly how we Just expected. Tell me a little bit about the average game time. I did some math before this series started because I was, you know, I was looking at what can we look for hopeful for BTG? What are some goals that maybe they would be looking to aim for? What, do, what can you set the bar as like we did well uh, within this game? And so I was like, game time for me, if you can extend the game time against a team like KSV, that shows a lot of growth and development. I'm going out on a limb here and I'm saying that the 8 minutes and 17 it's seconds not. didn't really help. Uh, it's about 66% of the average game time uh, that they have. So dominance from KSV is the best way to put it. Again, they showed dominance the entire tournament. One blunder. That was the one against Fnatic. And outside of that, just absolutely brutal performance. To be honest, Roll20 had a shot. Yeah, We talked did. about that. Roll20 had a shot. They performed much better against KSV than a lot of people expected. It was one of the reasons why we had a few hopes today against Ballistics, because they did so well into a KSV Black. But then Ballistics, of course, with a 2-0 victory. But then this disparity that we have in the series that we're in right now, BTG, I mean, they accept the role as the underdog. And uh, it's very transparent that KSV is just on another level. You know, we say, like, BTG accepts it because they do when looking at the whole tournament. But I feel yeah. like if you uh, if you play against KSV, you accept your role. <laughs> just, <laughs> you just do. <laughs> it's a good point. <laughs> you're just, it doesn't bam. really matter if you're BTG or anyone else. Oh, yeah, if you're BTG, Fnatic, you probably kind of you know, still look at it as like, mm, yeah, it's going to be a tough so I'm just waiting for game number two. Map selection. Oh, excuse me. We've got the summary coming up. Who is MVP? Here. Ooh, that is... Eight-minute game. Who is MVP? I feel like Cassia has to have the highest I'm image. It's got to be Rich because they always choose Rich, but I feel <laughs> like it's Cassia. I see Rich just because he plays in world. I'm going Cassia. I'm believing in the heart of the cards here. Bam! Ah! Three points to Dread. How can you... Why do you get a three? I, I said free. I don't know why I it's said three. one. Yeah, you're right. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then I'll, I'll let you redeem yourself. You can you can earn a point. I set. I wanted I wanted Samuro, just because it was Samuro. Just because not it was even Sumuro? not even the performance, just that most valuable hero. <laughs> <laughs> we should, we're now selecting based on most valuable <laughs> hero, Samuro. Yeah. Oh man, I feel like that is only going to promote a very wacky meta up in Hero League <laughs> if we keep doing that. Most valuable hero, Murky, you selected in a professional match. I have a colleague that is very fond of those <laughs> ideas. 